face in their direction. In fact, compass bearings indicated that it had virtually locked the Nicorette in its sight. Whichever direction they tried to turn, the funnel cloud seemed to demonically turn that way too. Even worse, the winds around the yacht had calmed, bringing the boat literally to a dead stop. That's really when, when it went from a matter of a tactical or a strategic choice as to how to get around it and still stay in the lead of the race to we're in trouble. We were down below asleep and then you hear the call all hands on deck. Crewman Kip Stanley Harris. And, and that's sort of horrible because it means something's gone horribly wrong on deck. With the twister rapidly closing in, the crew launched into survival mode. I made the call, all sails down now. And it's kind of a crazy call to make in the middle of the yacht race. You know, we're going to drop all sails, we're going to batten down the hatches. Were you frightened? No, I wasn't frightened. I was angry. I was angry at this thing coming and destroying our beautiful afternoon. I was angry at somebody taking the control away from me. You were too busy to dwell on, on your fear. You weren't thinking about loved ones or, or things that you should have done. You were too busy for those sort of thoughts. But yeah, I was definitely scary. The crew projected that the twister, with a base an incredible four to five hundred feet wide, was just a couple of miles away and five minutes from impact. They worked frantically, lashing down the mainsail. It's a big beast flapping around. It took, you know, there were about eight or ten of us all working flat out trying to tie down this bucking bronco. And ironically, in order to give the boat more stability, they weighed it down by filling the bottom with as much water as possible. One of my worst case scenarios was the boat being grabbed and thrown up, you know, and the heavier we made it, uh, the better it was. Just seconds before impact, Luda braced himself at the steering wheel and ordered most of his crew below deck. My biggest care was that we would lose people overboard because we have no control anymore. If somebody falls over, we would lose sight of them immediately, wherever they ended up. Another yacht team battling the effects of the twister long distance actually videotaped it as it was about to engulf the barely visible Nicorette. To fully appreciate the twister's immensity, consider this. The Nicorette's mast, which looks so tiny here, stands at 120 feet. That's the height of a 12-story building. Less than 12 minutes after the Nicorette crew first spotted the twister, they disappeared into it. I lost sight of the bow as it went through the wall of it. I couldn't see the front of the bow. It just got swallowed in. It was like a jet engine taking off. It's a lot of noise. It was like a thousand women screaming at the top of the voice, as high pitch as they could. And they remember, of all things, hail. Lots and lots of really hard hail. You can hear it going ping, ping, ping. But it got hit by some as big as golf balls, and, they, and that really hurt. really hurt your face, it hurt your hands. Captain Ingvall, of course, had stayed above deck. But in all the confusion, the veteran sailor neglected to take one of the most fundamental precautions, to tether himself to the boat. And in an instant, he was swept off his feet and nearly sucked off the Nicorette. I basically, like somebody had grabbed my jacket, I was thrown up, and as I was about to be thrown out, I hooked my right arm, because I didn't have a harness, around the steering wheel. And I was hanging off my hooked arm and the other hand holding onto the wheel. And in and that moment, did you think, this is it? No, again, I was just angry. I was just absolutely furious. You know, how, how dare you? <laughs> this is my boat. I'm staying here. The crew says that in the chaos, it lost all sense of time. The video shows the boat was in the belly of the water spout for roughly a minute. As it passed over us, there was this really strange sort of blue light that clouded that it was above us, must have been hollow up through the spout. The Nicorette was pushed on its side, then righted itself. And then, just as violently as it had all happened, everything was over. One of the things that really threw me was that when we came out the back door and we got this final pelting of hail. I turned around to look at it and there was nothing there. It was just gone. It was just grey clouds and you know blue skies coming up there. It was the most amazing things were like did it happen at all? Was it true? Was it real? Just as discombobulating was finding themselves shoved several hundred feet backward, their mainsail torn, seemingly out of position to win the prized Sydney Hobart race. We have the perfect excuse to turn around and go home. And we have maybe the perfect reason never to give up. 
and I, and I took the choice number two. I said, we will be proud of ourselves if we can finish one way or another. Wasn't that harsh, though? You had 23 people who'd just gone through this mind-bending experience. Mm. Yeah. Nobody even questioned no. to stop racing. Well, Nobody questioned me when I said that. And we could still win. We just had to pick up and get the boat going. The boat wasn't broken. We had sail damage, but we could still had a chance of winning. And nobody said, oh, no, we can't do it. Everybody said, well, how do we do it? Was it possible they could still win? The Nicorette crew made repairs, and after having gone through one of the strangest and scariest events any of them had experienced, they got back in the race. And over the next two days, they'd fly past 14 other boats. But there was one more, and it would cross the finish line first. We were second by 12 minutes. How was it coming across the finish line? Very disappointing. Very disappointing. Very proud that we made it to the finish. What was hard was the fact that we fought so hard to get back. How many of you will be signing up to sail this race next year? I think you find most of us already have. <laughs> <laughs> These are men and a woman who are not undone by the prospect of monsters at sea. Robbed by Mother Nature once, they are intent on challenging her again. The captain.